welcome to Oakdale Update. I'm your host, Frank Arcello. This is the City of Oakdale's news and information program about your community. Today I'm joined by our City Administrator, Bart Fisher, to learn all about the 2018 elections in Oakdale. Bart, thanks for joining us on Oakdale Update. Well, thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. We got, uh, first of all, how long have you been City Administrator? I have now been with the City of Oakdale for three years as the City Administrator. Are you happy, boy? Is this a good gig for you? Yes, this is a great fit. It's a great fit for myself and my family, both professionally and personally, so I'm really enjoying my That's time. That's what we like to hear. That's yeah. what we like to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so um, the uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up in the elections for this coming year, so let's see if we can straighten it out for our audience, okay? Uh, why, will August the, why will the August primary include special election for mayor? Why is it in August in the first place, I guess? <laughs> sure, yes. That's a great question, Frank. And yes, it can be a little confusing because we have a couple things going on in the, in the election season this year. But back in uh, December of 2016, um, uh, Mayor Stan Karwaski, uh, who was mayor at the time, he uh, resigned <laughs> because he was elected to be uh, uh, a county commissioner. Yes. Um, so in the meantime, uh, Councilmember Paul Ranke was appointed to be mayor until a successor could be elected at a special election. The special election for that seat was set for the August 14th, 2018 okay. primary date. Okay, so. that's it. All right, so um, you know, candidates must file, correct? That's correct. Does they have a time limit, I suppose? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I would say this, that the filing for the um, August 14th primary special election for mayor, that has already happened. Oh, so, it has? Yes, it has. How, how yeah. many people? Only one person, and that was the current current mayor, Paul Ranke, he is the only one. Oh, he's running unopposed yeah, then, he's huh? running unopposed in the special election. So yeah. he will be replacing himself? He essentially, he, well, if he gets I mean, elected, if he gets elected yeah, he'll but, be replacing yeah, himself. He's running okay. unopposed. Can I, can I add, yes, add well, one yeah. other thing real quick Certainly. here, Frank? So that's... That, special election, that term for, for the mayor for that special election, um, that will actually start um, in August. That person will be sworn in in August, and then uh, they will go through uh, the first Monday in uh, January. Okay. Um, so it's just a half a year-ish or yeah, so. For it's very short term. To finish yes. the, 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 the Finish the term. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, yes. and then okay. Well, then we'll come to that. Okay, so in, uh, the in no, November general election will also include office of mayor. Right. So what's that one all about? Yes. <laughs> well, that is the uh, you could call it the regular term for mayor. Mm -hmm. um, so that one will be four years. Um, if this whoever is elected in uh, on uh, November sixth for the mayor. Uh, will be sworn in in uh, the beginning of January uh, of 2019 and serve um, for four years. Okay. So they'll be the, the mayor for four years. Okay. So. And they have to register too. Anybody, any candidates for that too? That's correct. Yeah. But, but any, will that when? Oh, when is that going to be? When yep, you register for uh, that? Yeah. So any candidates for mayor and or any of the council seats coming up um, in the November election, they must uh, file between July 31st and August 14th. Okay. And they can right. do that at City Hall, Oakdale City Hall. At City Hall. So, yes. Okay. And it's $5 fee too, I think. It's $5 fee, yes. Yeah. Okay, so November 6th will also include a special election for a two-year council seat. Yes. A two-year council seat, one. Yes. What's that all about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, right after uh, the, um, uh, pretty much kind of right after she was sworn in, but uh, back in April of uh, 2000, um, 16 as well. Um, I'm sorry, April 2017, Councilmember Kristen Cece uh, oh, actually yeah. had to resign as uh, she was moving out of the city of Oakdale. And uh, so Councilmember or, or Mark Landis uh, was appointed uh, to finish uh, her term or was appointed, I shouldn't say finish her term, but was actually appointed um, to uh, fulfill her term until, again, a successor could be uh, elected at a special election. Okay, now that's just for one seat. That's just for one seat, yes. Okay, but now on November 6th, we'll also have two council seats available. Correct. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah, it gets even more confusing. <laughs> <right? laughs> okay, now all these two council seats are just, that's normal, right? Those are, that, that's normal. They're the, they're the regular council seats that would be up in this, in this 2018 year. Would CC, year, CC so. been, been in that one? Uh, no, she would not she have. She would not so, have been. Yeah, yeah. So who's who's up? Uh, so the the people that hold the two seats right now for the that, that for the regular election would be uh, Councilmember Lori Polkerbeck and Councilmember Bill Rasmussen. Bill Rasmussen. So, and what are you hearing on that? Is any is anybody read? 
Nobody's registered for that yet. Nobody's right? registered, for, Nobody's that, registered no. for that. Okay. Okay, so the filing period for the, uh, we already mentioned to do it again, yep. the filing period for the uh, November election? Yes, July 31st to August 14th, and again, uh, just go to City Hall, mm -hmm. and um, they'll get you squared away, and it's okay. a $5 fee. Now, uh, as a voter, uh, do I need to register every election term, year? No, you do not, Frank. Um, the only time you would need to register is um, if you're, if you've never voted before, you obviously would need to register. Um, now, but, when you say never voted before, does that mean if I just moved into Oakdale? Um, yes, or if you've never voted in any election in your before. Life. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. But uh, interesting, you bring up about uh, moving into Oakdale. If your address changes, you would have to re-register. Okay. And then also, um, if uh, oh boy, I'm blanking right now, but if, it's if you've never voted before, if your address changes, um, and I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I'll. I'll can that's okay. I, can it'll, I take a quick look? No, it'll <laughs> okay. come to you. That's okay. That's all right. All right. They, they, people will understand. That's yes. all right. Yep. Um, and then, okay, so then uh, where would I find out where I vote? Where do, what, your polling place? Yes. yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can either call City Hall, um, and we'll uh, help you out with that, or you can go to the Secretary of State's website. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a <laughs> slick little system where you just type in your address and the city and zip code, and they'll get you right to where you need to go. Okay, so. what about absentee ballots? Are we doing that these days? Yes, yep. Uh, so the city of Oakdale has always had the ability um, for uh, mail-in absentee ballots, um, and uh, you'd want to call the county elections uh, department on that. Mm -hmm. um, however, this year, uh, we are actually, uh, the county has chosen us as a site to do um, um, as absentee voting or, or early voting um, oh. in the city. So city hall will be a location. Uh, for residents to come in and uh, do early voting. So at City you could Hall. just come in and in uh, daily hours. I mean, the eight to five or whatever yes. time. Yes, yes, that's and correct. Registered vote. Yep, yep. And that is, oh, I'm gonna, I'm trying to remember. I believe that's from like September 9th uh, until August, uh, and I might not be exactly correct on that, but okay. it's, I think it's around September 9th, and that goes all the way to August. I'm uh, sorry, till November 5th. November. Okay. Yep. So right. right up until the last day. Okay. And what about by mail? Is there a way of yes? Yep. And then again, con contact the. Um, we can contact City Hall for anything, and we'll get you pointed in Absolutely. the right direction. But and they know um, their business at the at yes, the desk, front yep. desk. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. we uh, contact the Washington County Elections Office. Okay. So. Well, now that you got me totally confused, no, I'm yeah. <laughs> kidding. You did, you did a fine job. You yeah. explained it very well. And if anybody has any questions, just give us a call. We'll, Absolutely. we'll try call to walk City your Hall. way through it. So. Call City Hall and they'll yeah. take care of you. Yes. Very good, Bart. Thank you ever so much. All right. Thank you, Frank. I okay. appreciate it again. You bet. It's almost time for a short break. But first, here's a reminder about home improvement loans. Are you interested in fixing up or remodeling your house? Or do you need to make repairs to keep your home safe and comfortable? The city has several loans and grants available. To learn more, please call Linnea, the Community Development Department, at 651-730-2721. It's time for a short break. When we come back, Representative Joanne Ward will be here. We'll be right back. Representative Joanne Ward was first elected to office in 2012 and represents District 53A, which includes Oakdale. Representative Ward announced earlier this year that she will not seek re-election. I'm joined now in the studio by Representative Joanne Ward. Representative Ward, thank you for joining us on Oakdale Update. Thank you for asking me. I'm glad to be here. This is about the fifth time, I would think, at least, hasn't it? Oh, at least. At least yeah. that, yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, oh, I better get to the right page for questions here. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to try and talk about two different things here. We want to talk a little bit about the session, and we want to talk about your retirement. Um, and again, you were first elected in 2012, is that correct? Correct. And you took the position from a, a Republican, is that right? Yes. And you're Democratic? Yes. Okay. Um, and we, your district is, includes Oakdale, but what else does it include? South Maplewood, uh, the south, or the, sorry, the northwest part of Woodbury, and all of Landfall. Mm-hmm. All of land law. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we're going to try and talk about two different things today. Just okay. a little bit about the session. And the information I had was earlier, and I don't know what the results were, so I'm going to mm -hmm. count on you for that. Um, the uh, First of all, I always ask you every time I interview, what w how would you rate this session, 1 to 10, 10 being the best? One and a half, maybe. One and a half. Maybe two if... if uh, 
we just th focus on the few things that were accomplished. Okay. Um, the session wrapped up about May 21st. Is that 2021? Is that mm, correct? The 20th. Uh, at midnight, and then that followed the retirement. Uh, after that was the retirement speeches. What does that mean, at retirement? What? Anybody? Retirement speeches. So people who are not seeking re-election, who are retiring from the House, mm -hmm. um, can give presentation speeches. Okay. Did you do that? I did. Did you really? Yes, and they're all recorded, so if uh, someone has a, a favorite legislator that they've been following for a while, they can uh, look, it look it up, and mm -hmm. it's all recorded. In was the it hard to do, I mean, after being there for so long? Well, yes, it was hard. I, I still have very mixed feelings about it because there's a lot of, the work is never done, and yes. there's a lot of things that I would like to still be able to do, and a lot of things that I will be doing as a private citizen. Yep. Now that I know people, I know who to talk to and how the system works, and I plan on continuing working on several things, public okay. safety, early childhood, family education. Okay, we'll get into that hopefully. Okay, okay, okay. so some of the, the bills that were available and um, it, they went to, to uh, per, uh, Governor Dayton yes. for his veto or not, and I'm gonna just hit a couple of them. The okay. tax tax budget, how did that go? Uh, not well, not, not well. well. Um, it would have been fairly simple to have a clean tax bill, to have tax conformity with the new federal laws, um, and it's important. I'm still hoping that the governor and the legislators who are leaders in the House and the Senate in leadership positions will come to some agreement and we are, could... Are you saying this now? I mean, no, the session could, is over with, isn't it? It is, but he, the governor could call a special session. Uh -huh. If they would agree on a simple, straightforward tax conformity bill, we could have, you know, a special session, one day, a few hours, um, and we could pass that, which would be really helpful to all Minnesota oh, taxpayers. And it's tied in with the federal tax, the yes. new federal tax bill. And I don't think that was, it isn't working well, is it, at this point? Well, it won't work well if we don't fix that and, and have a conformity law. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, the public school budget, uh, the GOP freed up uh, $225 million, and I think Dayton wanted to, re to uh, veto that, and I think he did. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, that's because it really isn't new money. It, mm -hmm. it, how much was it? Uh, two twenty-five million. Except that it was money they already have. They're just saying you can borrow from here and you can pull from this account. And so uh, people who have children in one area or another, whether it was transportation or whether it was special ed or uh, lunches, you know, that, that they have, the, the GOP argument was that there is money there. They can use it for other, in other ways. And we have been trying for a long time to allow districts to um, have some flexibility with using their money, but they didn't give them any new money to do these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are expectations for testing water for lead uh, there are expectations for um, maintaining buildings better. Uh, there's a lot of work to do on some old buildings. Sure. And then we have safety issues. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done and mm. there's not new money in it. Uh, okay, and then opiates. Uh, I understand there was a thousand page om omnibus bill with uh, opiates attached. What happened to that one? Uh, that didn't go either. That, see, this is the problem when they had thousand pages or close to it, um, there's not enough time for people to process what's sure. in and what's not. Sure. Um, we would all have supported the opioid bill. It should have gone by itself. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to bundle these things. And, you know, we're not allowed to bundle money when we're campaigning. Why are we allowed? It's actually not unconstitutional to bundle mm -hmm. bills. Um, you can say, you know, I mean, you can rationalize that any bill that is for the good of the people could be put into a bill and say this is a bill for this legislative session and we'd have one bill. But the, it's, it just means there's too many poison pills in it. So there's and thousand pages. I mean, there must have been a hundred different things attached to this thing? Oh, more than that. <coughs> oh, really? More I than that. I just threw that out there. Yeah. Really? Yeah, more than that. Many uh, issues get addressed in that, and um, some of them would be what we think is helpful. Many of them would be helpful, and many of them would be destructive. And it's, it's really hard 
when you're sitting there on the House floor and you know that some of the things that are being cut or <clears throat> proposed are going to mean that people will be hurt mm. and some people will die. Mm. And think about health care kinds of funding, um, the, the elder care issue. You know, people were so upset because I would say we have not properly funded. Terrible things happen, but we haven't properly funded um, the administration of safety inspections, uh, training inspections, and things like that for senior care centers. There were a few instance, instances on yes. the news yes. about dead, dead old people, and mm -hmm. this didn't get addressed then, did it? No, it didn't, and it could have. I mean, it I'm sure there was, it was brought up several times, yes. but nothing came of it. Well, huh? and um, the executive director of the, uh, the commissioner uh, for public health um, resigned because of this, oh. and um, you know that that may have been appropriate, but at the same time, I think we didn't fund the agency to be able to do the kinds of things that we expect them to do. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing happens in public safety or and and corrections, um, also with IT. So we could talk about Minlars. That's, uh, we'll get to that's that. A big one. Okay. Um, okay. The infrastructure bill, uh, hundred. 1.5 billion, mm -hmm. and that went to public works projects and mm -hmm. DOT and uh, 500 jobs. to DOT. Yeah, jobs. I mean, yes. Now these all passed. Is that correct? I believe so. All of these did. Okay, so uh, 129 million to the University of Minnesota school systems, mm -hmm. and uh, you talk yep. about any of them that you feel for. Uh, 75 million to the University of Minnesota. Yeah. They usually get a pretty good chunk of money almost every session, don't they? Yes, and you know, there is a, a problem with funding our, our higher education institutions just like there is with the public schools. Um, the Minnesota University of Minnesota is not ranked as high as it used to be. Hmm. Um, the School of Medicine is not. Uh, we're, we're having some problems with those situations because we haven't been funding them. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody wants to pay more taxes, but the taxes we pay are for the services that we expect. And um, I have said on the House floor, when people complain about government is too big, well, government is as big as people expect it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, they express needs and the government responds. So if we're trying to provide services, who's going to pay for them? I mean, we all need to pay for them. Mm -hmm. We all have our special interests, and I say that as a civilian, mm -hmm. you know, and you get enough of me with 10 different things, mm -hmm. you guys are just, I don't know, what are you going to do, huh? Try to do the best we can. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then there was uh, the, the one I thought was pretty good. $32 million is going for three new vets homes. Yes. Three new vets homes. Is that, did that go through to you? Um, it is signed um, and uh, will be available, but it has to meet some criteria for matching funds. From federal? From the federal okay. government. And, um, you know, there's some controversy about where those new homes will be located. I love the plans for them. I suggested they actually add child care to them mm. because in rural Minnesota we have a shortage of child care facilities and we all know how elderly people do better when there are children sure. around and the children learn from the elders. Uh, so, you know, it seems like a really good fit, mm -hmm. and they would like to add those kinds of services and facilities to the, to the veterans' homes. Um, we have needs for more beds for veterans. There, there's no question about that. Now, these are that. retirement homes. It's not a hospital. It's not a, like a vet's. It would be full care. Full care. Oh, yeah. full care. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, one of the things, uh, the sex traffic bill... You introduced that? Yes. And uh, tell us about that one. That's getting to be pretty serious business. Well, it is very serious business, and it really came to the forefront with the uh, big sports event this last winter mm -hmm. uh, because there was a lot of trafficking going on in spite of the efforts to manage that and control it, to prevent it. Um, Minnesota has been targeted internationally as a, kind of a hot spot to send people for trafficking. and. Uh, that's trafficking human beings. And so I introduced two bills with the help of um, county um, attorneys 
and uh, statisticians so that we could actually have an impact. And a couple of other states who have done these bills uh, have enacted these laws and they've seen a dramatic reduction in human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So one of them would have been to um, confiscate vehicles that were used in the, the process and um, that didn't go uh, beyond the, the house at all. Um, the other one that did would have increased penalties. So um, the way that it's currently written, if someone purchases, is a patron of uh, prostitution, they have a, a fairly minimal fine. Um, they have uh, 20 hours of community service, probably go to John school, um, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And other states have found that if they increase the penalties, you remember maybe years ago that they put pictures on the, in yes. the newspaper, yes. pictures of the of the men who were purchasing human beings, and um, they don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's it's just it's really a huge problem. And so we have all of these victims who are caught in a vicious cycle, and we want to help them, and we want to prevent their abuse. So. What the bill was, was trying to do was to increase the penalty. So it would be, uh, I think we ended up with 100 hours of community service, um, a fine that was significantly increased. Um, goodness, there were several other pieces to it. Um, well, confiscating hmm. their car would be the biggest thing, I would it say. It would be a big it's thing. And, and there's always a, a caveat to that and under any circumstances when um, cars are confiscated, if the family needs this car to go sure, to work, sure. if that's the only means of transportation, then there are exceptions made sure. because there's no point in penalizing the family. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, it's that that's something that people were really reluctant to do. I think uh, Minnesota, as a general rule, is working pretty hard on this prostitution business. Working very hard on it, but actually going after the fact yeah. rather than doing the prevention piece. Yeah. And we know that increasing penalties for this really makes a difference in, in the incidence of criminal behavior. Sure. And partly because most of the people who are involved in it don't think of themselves as criminals. Of and they, know. they know what the penalties are. And, you know, sometimes people will slow down their driving yep. if they think about the, pen, the fine that they're but, going to have to pay. But not always. In, in that. Right. And that's different than, than a criminal, uh, someone who has criminal thinking, and you increase the penalties for criminals, and we think that that would be a deterrent to us, but it isn't to them yeah. because they don't think that way. Yeah. Okay, so. uh, let's talk a little bit about your, just one real quick question dealing with that. Uh, looking back, what are you most proud of? We're in kind of a hurry here, so what, right. what were you most... What were you most proud of? You've introduced a lot of bills, and yeah. what are you most proud of that passed? And You're right, that, that actually are, are making a difference. Yes. First of all, I carried the um, all-day kindergarten bill in the house, oh. and that's passed, and we have students all over, and families all over the, the state who are benefiting from that. Um, it's now just accepted, mm -hmm. all-day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. It's optional still, but it's, it's there. Um, I carried the uh, tan-free teens bill, so y you have to be 18 or older to use a tanning bed. Oh. In the past, uh, as a parent, you could sign to have your child use a tanning bed, mm. but we have uh, an enormous um, epi uh, epidemic of melanoma, mostly in young women in their 20s and 30s, sure. and to the degree that they're dying, and they don't realize the consequence of using tanning beds. So. That's that's a huge thing. It's a, it's the equivalent of smoking. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good one. Um, I also work, we have the Hero Center. Uh, so in this district, uh, I did some environmental bills, um, the trails, Browns Creek Trail, those kinds yeah. of things, okay. and um, gosh, there were a lot. Okay. Um, all right. So now you're retiring. You yes. announced your retirement. Okay. Now why now? What 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 was what pushed oh, over the edge? Oh well. I will say too that, I, and I must say this, my underlying everything that I've been doing is the civility piece and civil discourse uh, work and we now have a civility caucus 
and I think people are really proud to be able to put that on their resume and say that they're active members of the Civility Caucus in the Minnesota Legislature. Mm -hmm. House and Senate, bipartisan, getting people to work together, and that will continue. I, there are champions besides me now, and I will continue to support and help that. So, Wouldn't given you that, love to see that in Washington, D.C.? Oh, it's, I mean, of yes. all, it is just horrible what's going on it in is. there. It is. Discourse. There are people who are working on that. So why, in Washington? Yes, yes. Well, it's, uh, it's to me. well, it's quiet because it doesn't make, you know, it, it's not uh, deemed newsworthy because oh, nice stories aren't yes. as attractive. Yes. Um, so I'm retiring. Okay. Um, so we're, we're yeah. um, we just got a few minutes here. What what are your plans? Are you going to travel? Are you going to sit around and eat bonbons? Or <laughs> how are you going to work that? I will do, be doing some traveling. My husband is also. <laughs> entering retirement and, mm -hmm. and by the way I will continue working until the new person is sworn in in January. Mm -hmm. uh, my term ends then. So um, uh, mostly it's family. Uh, we have grandchildren, children and grandchildren here in the cities and I want to spend more time with them. Sure. My mother is 97 and she lives in Kansas mm -hmm. and I want to be able to be with her sure. more. She's in good health but I can see that at 97. At 97, yeah. and um, I can see that there will come a time when I need to be able to just mm -hmm. be there with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, there are projects that I have put off for these six years, and um, I have a lot to do. Yep. And when you were in the legislature, I mean, that's a 24/7 just about, yes. isn't it? I mean, it is. a lot of time. You didn't get the dishes washed, the laundry done. A lot of things didn't get done while you were right. always gone. Right. I understand that. Right. Um, the other, the last question I had for you was, I forgot. Min um, Lars? What? Min Lars? Yes, Min Lars. What, how did All right. Um, real quickly. We're, we're real quickly. Um, the, there is a little bit of funding for it, but it isn't nearly enough. And the, the key to that is, uh, or an example of it, of, of the IT piece, which is all about what is behind the Min Lars problem, is mm -hmm. the uh, uh, IT stuff. Um, the House committee that I served on that dealt with all of this is um, cutting the IT budget by 23%. That's what I heard. Yep. Yeah. So do more, modernize, bring it up to date, and, and bring the whole system together instead of having so many pieces mm -hmm. as it was <laughs> originally just kind of growing. Yep. So now modernize it and bring it up to date and make Minlar's work and cut your budget 23%. I want to congratulate you on your years of service and uh, I wish you the best of luck in your retirement. Thank you. That's all we have time for this month on Oakdale Update. For everyone at the City of Oakdale, thanks for watching.